So let us look at such an example. Okay, I have a current switch S1. Okay, because I just want to point out, point out that you we could ask you to calculate such areas. Yes, of course. Okay, I1, I2, switch S1, S2. Yes. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do, right? And um, yeah, so let's see what we get now, okay? So I'm going to say that as usual, T, S1 is on for time T1, okay? S2 is on for the complementary time. Uh, so let me call, let me be unambiguous here. This is T2. Okay, that means this time instant T is T1 plus T2. Yes. Okay, so and this guy is T1. Okay, yeah. So what I, I want to now do is obviously figure out the, the uh, so there is a current source I1 which is driving this and then there is a current source I2. Yes. Which is the same. Okay. Correct. So <coughs> what I want to now do is, I want to first of all figure out the timing of T2 so that That's we it. don't go below zero. That's correct. Right? Yes. Okay. But so let's first of all plot the output voltage. Yes. Right? Because that's very straightforward to do. And we also know the boundary conditions because it starts from zero and ends in zero at the end of yeah, exactly. T1 plus T2. Yeah. Capacitor is initially discharged. Right. Right. So S1 is now closed. Right. We know it's a linear charge up. It has to go linearly. Yes. It has to go. Let me use a different color. Yeah. It has to go linearly up to here. Yes. The slope of this will be the slope here will be I1 by C. I1 I C exactly yes okay this is the M slope equals this now from here we want this guy to discharge yes and come back down to zero yes right therefore we have to figure out what is this. so yes at, and that slope is minus I2 by C yeah this slope is uh, I call it M1 M2 yes minus I2 by C. Yes, perfect. All right. So, what <coughs> is first of all this final value that you get here? Okay. Okay. This value is it is going to charge up. To so, yes. So, that should just be because we know the slope and initial point is 0. 0. It, the equation should just be I1 by C times T. T1. Right. So, times T1 so will give you the value. Be I1 by C times T1. T1. Right. Okay. So, now we have the initial condition for the second curve. Second curve. That's right. right. So, from <laughs> I1 by C into T1, we want that to discharge in time T. Yes. Right? To, so, if you look at this value, if you look at this equation. Yes. Right? This would be Vc of T equals this much. So, you want to write it in absolute time or relative time? Ah, relative time. That is relative time. From here. From here. T equal to 0 is 1. Yes. So, we right? will do T equal to 0. Yeah. Correct. So, with minus I2 by C into T2. T. Yeah. Exactly. So correct. At, times T and yeah. then. So, it, at T equal to T2, I will say here, at T equal to T2. Yes. We want Vc of T to go to 0. Correct. Right. Therefore, I1 T1 by C1 should be equal by to C. C. Yes should be equal to I2 T2 I by C. T2 T2 by C. Oh, interesting. So, you have a condition that I1 T1 is equal to I2 T2. Exactly. So, it implies <coughs> T2 yes. should be I1 T1 by I2. I, I see why also. Yeah. Because if you, if one of the currents is much larger than the other, you should be charging, uh, you know, for a, or let's say I1 is very large. Yes. Right. Since uh, it is charging for a time T1. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I2 is smaller. It will take a longer time to discharge. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It still need to discharge the same amount of voltage exactly. or charge. Makes so sense. So the product of current into time should be a constant. Should be a constant. Larger the current, lesser the time. Smaller the current, more the time. More the time. Exactly. So now we see that we have like a. Uh, 
you know a, a nice triangular yes. waveform that is going to repeat <laughs> yes okay in fact now i can see if you had t1 and t2 or i1 and i2 yeah. uh, quite different you will get a triangular waveform with different slopes on on exactly side, right? exactly so <laughs> one slope will be i1 by c other will be right, minus i2 by c and so right. on now if i ask you right uh, what is for example uh, what is the area under this curve okay right that yes. is one question that we could just ask right yes. what is the area under the curve well it's just the area of this rectangle of this triangle of the triangle correct. right it's a uh, base is t1 plus t2 <coughs> okay because again let's not, not be confused by the values if you look at this this is t1 plus t2 okay and it is going to a maximum of i1 t1 by c so okay. the area right this area here, yes area is simply half into t1 plus t2 into i1 t1 by c okay and we also know what t2 should be from here it is yes. i1 t1 by i2 yes right and therefore you can plug that in and you can evaluate the exact expression for the perfect area so you must given you should be able to plot a waveform and then you should be able to evaluate things like area under that curve and Makes stuff sense. like that right and now we can also extend to energy for example exactly right, right? Exactly. power and energy so we can see that there is energy being transferred from i1 to c exactly and then from c to uh, i2. i2 exactly right, right? right. So, so you and that needs to be balanced as well most likely exactly right so <coughs> that is the key point here okay okay so i think with that we can stop right and um, we'll yes. hopefully we have given a flavor of different kinds of switch capacitor problems that you can solve yes thank you thank you